Folks, I'm in literally the jungle right now. I have freaking dinosaurs behind me right now. The T-Rex is coming at me. He's giving me the side eye. Where could I be right now? But of course, the Maryland Zoo. I'm so excited for this episode. We have an amazing guest coming on, the CEO and president of the Maryland Zoo, Mr. Kirby Fowler. That's the next voice you'll hear. The No Picks After Dark podcast is fueled by Zeke's Coffee. Have you tried their coffee yet? I'm telling you, there's something different about it. Maybe it's because they roast their beans in a fluid coffee roaster, which provides the most accurate roasting temperatures and made with love. You will just have to check it out for yourself and try their delicious food while you're at it. Open now for curbside service, online ordering, carry out, and they also do wholesale. Visit Zeke's Coffee at 4719 Hartford Road. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 8 to 5 p.m. Kitchen closes at 3 p.m. Or visit Zeke'sCoffee.com and you too can be fueled by Zeke's. No Picks After Dark is sponsored by Snug Books, an independent bookstore serving Northeast Baltimore and beyond. In addition to featuring new books for all ages, the store also carries cards, stationery, gifts, games, and more. Visit snugbooks.com to shop online, learn more about the store, read our latest newsletter, and find a calendar of events, or come browse the store in person. Snug Books is located at 4717 Harford Road, next to Zeke's Coffee in Hamilton, Laurelville. There is free parking behind the store and open hours are Tuesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Welcome to the No Picks After Dark podcast. I am your host, Aaron Dante. I told you guys, we always have the celebrities come on the show. And we have a huge person, big in Baltimore, and he's doing amazing things for the state of Maryland and had this most amazing zoo. I think better than the San Diego Zoo. Hey, we're here at Maryland Zoo. Mr. Kirby Fowler, how are you? Fine. Thanks for having me here. Oh, uh, what a, I, it's an honor to have hang oh. out with you and just sit there and talk. Yeah, the honor's mine. No, it's serious. great to have you here in this wilderness. I mean, we are with the dinosaurs. Yes, yep. And you survived. Survived. We made I feel like I'm in Jurassic Park, but Maryland Jurassic Park though. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, having these interviews, I've just been thank I it's been honored to be here and this amazing ambiance. I really appreciate you. Well, thank you for being here. It's a gem of the city and the state. All right. We used to do the sliding board. Yes. Uh, I didn't think anybody was going to know that, but yes. For the first oh, time sorry. Ever, okay, no, okay, kidding, okay, 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 okay. Right. <laughs> for the first time ever, I went down the sliding board. Me too. I was a little nervous. Yeah. A little nervous. It says it's uh, for children under the age of 14, but we, you know what? Feel, I act like that. We can feel like that. Yeah, I act we? like that. Yeah, fine. So let's talk a little bit about you. Let's, people get, let's get people to know a little bit more about who you are. Are you originally from Baltimore, Maryland? No, I'm from New Jersey, grew up in New Jersey, but I've been in Baltimore now for about 30 years. So you know you've been Jersey from, I say Jersey. Yeah, I yeah, say yeah. Jersey because I used to live there. Yeah, yeah. You're like, New Jersey, I'm not from New Jersey. I get it though. <laughs> so like, why'd you move down here from New Jersey? Well, it was a, a long trip to get down here, but okay. I was, before coming to Baltimore, I was in New York City. Okay. I was going to law school in New York City and I applied for uh, several different uh clerkships with some federal judges and mm -hmm. interviewed you know up and down the east coast and i really connected with the judge who's down here okay. i remember that day that i took the amtrak down uh, from new york down to baltimore and i'd never been on the amtrak line there and just when you cross over you know, parts of the chesapeake, chesapeake bay on the way in mm -hmm. and then hitting baltimore that was my first time ever visiting baltimore really and it was um yeah it was like 20 24 i think uh first time ever so, were you so you were a Jer New Jersey New Jersey yeah, guy? Yeah, I was mostly New Jersey North for the most part. That's Bruce Springsteen I, growing up? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I, I went to uh, born in the USA, nineteen eighty four. That concert. Oh wow. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So I used to live in New Jersey. I was yes. talking earlier. I lived yeah. in uh, New Brunswick, and then I lived in Ocean Township. Mm -hmm. So I used to go. Uh, I actually saw Bruce play at the Pink Pony. He just showed the up. Stone Pony. Stone Pony. Sorry, sorry. Stone Pony. Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah. Pony. Sure, sure. He just walked in. He now. just walked in. I've, I've tried that. I got into Stone Pony a couple times, hoping he'd walk in. It never happened. Yeah, he just walked in. Random night. Yeah. Sitting there, just playing. We're like... You're a lucky man. <laughs> is that who I think that is? That's cool. It was really cool. Uh, so I do miss Jersey. I miss the pizza and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, growing up in Jersey, real quick, what is your favorite childhood memory growing up? Uh, um, it had to be... Actually, kindergarten through 12th grade, because okay. I went through the same school system 
I mean, at different, there was elementary, of course, middle, then high school, but I was with the same kids from kindergarten through 12th, uh, for the most part. It kept on, more and more kids got added on until I got to my high school, which was a thousand, like 500 kids per class. But I just saw a bunch of them uh, about a week or so ago, kids I, I knew from kindergarten, and just having that continuity and just to spend, and I was out in western New Jersey where, um, in fact, we don't even say Jersey out there. For some reason, we're like, Middle America out there. I don't you know. are. You really are. You're out there. You're was, not even just. It was rural. Because you're all like 80, I want to say, right? Or yeah, but 84. When people say what exit, I was like, I don't know. Probably like 10 different exits to yeah. get to western New Jersey. So, But it was nice and rural. It was. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Westminster, like the Rolling Hills. Gotcha. Westminster, yeah. Gotcha. So, okay. So you, where'd you end up going undergrad? In, in, uh... Uh, went up to Dartmouth okay. uh, in New Hampshire and then um, NYU Law School. Okay. And then that's how you ended up at law school and, yep. you know, law degree and then so you came down Baltimore ninety on that Amtrak train. Yep. What was your first impression of Baltimore when you got here? Well, so that was, uh, to date myself, that was 1989, 1990. Okay. Um, and so um, I didn't have much time to explore at all. Uh, but all I did was walk into the courthouse and interview the judge. Right away, I liked the people. Okay. I liked the people right away. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a few times after that that I came uh, to check out the city. Uh, but I, I loved it. But I only thought I'd be here for two years. Because I loved Washington D.C., I was all about it. I was a, I was a government major. I wanted to be in D.C. I, I did an internship down there once, and uh, I loved it. And then after being in Baltimore for two years, I said I'm going to move to D.C. because that's where I wanted to go. And after a month or two, D.C. said I miss Baltimore, and so I turned around and came back. That's a rarity. I terminated my lease. That's a early. rarity. That is a real rarity. People yeah. never come back. They normally mm -hmm. leave, and but they stay in D.C. Nobody actually lives in D.C. Stays in D.C. Actually, it's like it's a train. Yeah, yeah. I just I did miss the. The people of Baltimore, just the the neighborhoods, and, and the fact there is continuity here. I keep on saying the continuity, but uh, in D.C., then was more transient. I think it's a little better today, but uh, but Baltimore, like uh, the people who I have known for a few years, were still here and plan to you know, like raise their families here. Baltimore, I always tell people, it's, it's about the people. It's yeah. a passion for the mm -hmm. city. I mean, you were here when I want to say Memorial Stadium was here. Before can or Cannon Yards, were you in a was your, yeah, oh, were I, you in a right I, between right? It's it, well, it's bad. I was actually at Memorial Stadium. Okay. For the last game. Okay. But it rained out that day, so I was like standing oh, like no. under the the bleachers, you know, trying to stay dry. And so they rescheduled. I couldn't make the rescheduled game, so I missed seeing a, a, an Orioles game. Oh wow! That Memorial so Stadium. I remember growing up as a child. When I lived in Baltimore, Memorial Stadium was the place to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the Greater Edna Garden, Waverly yeah. area. And so I just, and then when I saw Candy Yards, we had moved away. Candy Yards, I was like, whoa, this is different. So, yeah, it's definitely, definitely. Although it's got what I was reading some rankings of uh, the stadiums, and the Camden Yards continues to be at the top in terms oh. of just the aesthetic and, and the way it transformed uh, the, the, the rehabilitation of stadiums throughout the country. Yes, yes. Now, you come back to Baltimore. How do we how do we progress your your career to where we are right now? Like you were in law, but then we fast forward many, like many years. I know you. I know of you through downtown partnership. Mm -hmm. That's how I remember who you were. Uh, how do we end up there? And then how do we end up at this wonderful place called the Maryland Zoo? Yes, yeah, some, somehow I'm on my third career right now. Okay. But, uh, so I was um, an attorney for. Well, I guess I'm still paying my bar dues, so I'm still an attorney. Okay. Uh, but uh, I was an attorney for about 10 years, um, and I didn't know the stint, so maybe 12 years total. But I was a litigator initially. I was doing a lot of employment law work, but then I switched to land use work at one mm. point. But uh, I loved it when I, while I was in it, but also I realized, you know, they should probably give you personality tests in law school <laughs> because uh, I was a litigator who didn't like to get in fights. Oh. <laughs> and, oh okay. and, it just, and when I got into fights, I just didn't like myself in that scenario. Mm. I, didn't, I, I didn't feel like I was my essential self. So um, I was, uh, one day I realized I gotta do something different. And so you know, my wife was kind enough to allow me to take a big pay cut to go work for the O'Malley administration. Uh, Martin O'Malley had been mayor for one year. Mm -hmm. And so I joined him early on to do economic development and neighborhood development. And um, it was, Eye-opening. I got to know the city even better than before. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got to love the neighborhoods. And I, that's probably when I truly, absolutely fell in love with, with Baltimore. And I did that for a couple of years. I couldn't afford it after a while. And I went back to uh, law firm life. Uh, but then, because of 
the work I was doing there. Plus also, I was the chair of the Station North Arts District when it first started to take off mm -hmm. and helped to create it. And so I sort of kept my fingers in the mix. And because of that, uh, I believe the um, chair of downtown partnership remembered me from, from the community work I was doing. And then I was invited to apply for the downtown partnership job. Nice, nice. And how long were you there for? Uh, 16 years. Wow. Yeah, it was 16. Wow. 2004 to 2020. Yeah, 16 years. Wow. Wow. You, you were there for a while. Yes. Yep. Did, yeah. you, did you plan to retire there? You know, that was early middle age for me <laughs> okay. or, 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 or late, the late 30s. 40s. So I didn't really think in those terms at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, I just loved what I was doing. It just being the center of all of the issues of the city. Uh, ultimately, I was probably what got me in the end too was uh, you know every social issue you could think of mm -hmm. somehow it ended in Baltimore downtown Baltimore we used to say downtown Baltimore is where it's everybody's home mm -hmm. and it's true because all of the issues of the city come together in downtown you've yep. got the affluent uh, parts of the city but also the homelessness right. you've got a drug addiction but also yachts right. uh, you got these great you know, jobs uh, where people are doing well and people who are you know waiting in line at city hall for assistance you know you, you get all that so that was very dynamic and interesting and trying to make a difference i also got really interested in smart growth okay actually because of where i grew up believe it or not because it was farmland and some of the farmland was being taken over by condos mm -hmm. and it broke my heart and i believe you got to rehabilitate the center cities and bring people back to the cities so we don't keep on gobbling up the rural land ah. and at the same time you can rebuild the centers ah. so that 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 drove a lot of it I like that. I like that. And then you just, so the Maryland Zoo, if I would have asked you now, 10, 12, 14, 16 years ago, did you think you'd end up here? No, I didn't know where I was going to end up then, but, uh, but let me tell you how I ended up here. Okay. Uh, it has to do with my daughter, believe it or not. So okay. she was a teen, um, teen intern here. Uh, she was part of the teen crew, the zoo crew. And I'm uh, sorry for the helicopter going overhead. It's all good. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Um, but she's part of the, the teen zoo crew and I would drop her off, pick her up. And as I was sitting there and I was getting to the point at downtown partnership where I said, you know, maybe it's time for me to look around. Mm -hmm. It'd been 16 years, 15 years. And I was, I thought, based upon my daughter's stories, I thought, you know what, maybe some of my skills are transferable here. I knew nothing about animals for the most part oh. or zoology, biology, but the nonprofit management side I had been doing. So I thought, well, maybe that could be of, benefits so i applied went through um a pretty rigorous uh interview process uh and thankfully you know, made it through and and got to this point but of course right right um right when i joined the zoo is when COVID struck so right right yeah. and that's us and so what we'll do folks i want to you know just give it a little quick background mr fowler and then we're going to come back we'll talk about the maryland zoo we're talking about the conference that's coming up here the conference that will be here coming soon We'll talk about the initiatives, the 10-year initiatives that you guys have mm -hmm. got going on and that rare thing. So I'm excited to talk about that. We'll be right back after these messages. When you give to United Way, your gift could be the first spark of something bigger. It can help provide nutritious food for a family in need because eating healthy shouldn't be a luxury. It can help someone with housing challenges and be a catalyst for a new beginning because a safe space to call home is the foundation for building a better future. Give today. Spark something bigger. The No Picks After Dark podcast is proudly partnered with Maggie's Farm. Located at 4341 Hartford Road, Maggie's Farm offers a unique dining experience with delicious handcrafted cocktails and mouth-watering cuisine from falafels to scallops and everyone's favorites, honey sriracha cauliflower wings. Open for dinner from 4 p.m. until 10 p.m., Tuesday through Saturday, and for brunch, Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. With delectable chicken and waffles, shrimp and grits, biscuits and gravy, and more. Check out Maggie's Farm on Instagram and Facebook for daily and weekly food specials. OpenWorks is Baltimore's largest maker space, offering access to tools ranging from 3D printers to welder and training in how to use them. OpenWorks also offers affordable studio space, a coffee shop, and fun-free events throughout the year. 
But OpenWorks is more than a public workshop. It's a community of creative professionals, students, seniors, entrepreneurs, and makers of all kinds. Check out the website at www.openworksbmore.org or Instagram at open underscore works underscore be more for class schedules, membership options, and more. We are back. I told you guys, it's like a Jurassic Park out here, but in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, again, we have Mr. Kirby Fowler, CEO, President of the Maryland Zoo. How are you? I'm great. Hey, I'm having fun out here. Me too. I'm just listening to the cicadas or whatever's making all that noise up there. Hey, it's all That's right. not part of the exhibit. Oh, okay. hey, don't worry about it. I'm coming out there tonight. Um, so... You guys have a lot of things going on here. You guys have had uh, a night brunch here. That I heard it was amazing. Um, you know, at nighttime, nighttime at the zoo. That sounds so cool. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, when I first say the word Maryland Zoo, what comes to your mind when I say that? I'd say Oasis. Okay. It's Oasis. Uh, I think all of Druid Hill Park is an oasis. And I think it was intended to be that way, too, uh, when it was initially designed. Uh, when I first got here and I was on one of our golf carts. I was like amongst the old growth trees. I remember calling a friend of mine and saying, I can't believe how quiet it is out here. So we are about two miles away from downtown Baltimore, maybe three miles. Yet we're in the heart of the city, but we're surrounded by old growth trees. Some of these trees are 100, 150 years old that you know, we're, we're sitting under. Um, so that way always, but also I would say surprise. And I say it, hmm. there's surprise here because like a lot of people, I was not fully aware of the conservation work that the zoo does nationally, internationally, you know, going out and helping animals survive and prosper in their original conditions, in their, in, in, in their, in their, in their habitats in, in the world. Um, but also, I was unaware of the research that's done here, and I was really surprised. I, I've often, you know, said it's similar to the, we're like the Johns Hopkins of animal care, because we're like, we, we know animals better than most we're experts we're doing cutting edge research and if you it, it, believe it or not there isn't much that people know about animals i remember going into our hospital and they showed me the different medications and i said so how do you know which medications to use well we just we we mix them together and see what works because there's not much research done on it. so mm. so um and and thankfully they're very smart and they know what they're doing but it's just really impressive the um the conservation work the research work, I just had no idea how the high quality of the animal care that was uh, being administered here. So you see, you see in the word conservation. Yeah. People are probably like, the zoo, conservation, how does that, how tied it in? Yeah, this? it's funny. When I first got here, I didn't understand how it's used in the zoology field because mm -hmm. I had a different impression of that. Uh, conservation in the zoology field is about, um, you can breed animals here and release them into the public. I mean, back into, into, into wildlife, into their into in situ, back into their uh, into their natural environments. Uh, it's about teaming up with uh, a group in Botswana, like we're doing today. We're the lead sponsors of a group in Botswana that's geotracking elephants in the wild to determine their uh, migratory patterns uh, in order to reduce conflict between elephants and people in the village. Mm. Uh, so we, we learned so much here in dealing with animals. Uh, that's the, that's the one, uh, one of the great things about a zoo is that you learn to deal with exotic animals here so you can take those lessons out elsewhere and help like in Botswana or in Panama where we're helping with Panamanian golden frogs or in Bolivia where we're rescuing something I didn't know, freshwater dolphins, uh, in Bolivia. So we are not just doing fantastic animal care work here, husbandry and training. We are also taking those lessons out into the world and helping animals prosper in their natural setting. I love that, I love yeah. that. But so, you know, I didn't realize that, cause I did an interview with the aquarium and they were really conservationists. Yeah. And the zoo, you guys are saying the same terminology right now. So I always hear that and I'm like, wow, like I didn't really understand that until learning from you guys and people don't really know about that. If I could add, it's also about conservation locally. Right now we're sitting in this zone called the Maryland Wilderness. The purpose of this zone is to show people that we have conservation right in our backyards. There's important animals right in our backyards. So we are working with the Department of Natural Resources. To, we go out to Garrett County to help with the black bears. Uh, with uh, We're tracking down turtles. Uh, yeah, we're just doing all these great things, even locally. So it's not just about helping out other parts of the world. It's about helping animals in our own state. 
Wow, so where are we right now in the Maryland Zoo? Because I've seen the dinosaurs. What is this exhibit? Tell us a little bit about it and how long is it here for? Sure. Well, we are in the Maryland wilderness, okay. uh, and I just mentioned the purpose of it, but we have a lot of extra space here. Okay. So uh, recently we've, um, in some ways, rediscovered the back part of Maryland, Maryland wilderness where not much was happening. So we've had some events here like wine in the wilderness. But when you look at this environment, um, you think, what else could go here temporarily? So we have this dinosaur exhibition I'd seen first in Philadelphia. And in Philadelphia, it was good, but they didn't have the old growth trees. They didn't, this is an immersive experience for people when they come here, see these animatronic dinosaurs. We've got like 19 or 20 of them. And you, the minute you walk through the gate into the dinosaur exhibition, you do feel transported. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it feels like you could be back 65 million years ago mm -hmm. and, 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 and be in this environment. Uh, so this is a perfect environment for it. It's also a great educational experience for people. We just didn't want to plop down these anim animatronic dinosaurs and it'd be this sort of just entertainment horror show type thing. We've got signage showing how these dinosaurs have traits that have continued on in animals today. Uh, it's about education uh, and, and as well as the fun, but it's been very well received. It's only going to be open until November 30th. And as part of our plan also, we had to keep things alive and interesting uh, and new. And you have to keep on moving things in and out and keeping the buzz alive. That's true of anything you do. And you know that from podcasts. You got to keep it interesting. You, you know? got to keep it interesting. Yeah. You got to, you know, I, I remember, you know, uh, Mike Evans gave me a tour of here. Mm -hmm. And I remember just. Our communications director. Yes, yeah. communications director. And he, yeah. and he was, I, I was used to going to Washington, D.C. Zoo. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my thing because I was like, oh, I'll take the Mark train, hop off, you know, I'll take the subway, walk up that long hill and get to the Smith of the zoo. But we have a gem and jewel right in our backyard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my son comes here all the time with his, with his camp. And, you know, I'm, and I went and Mike gave me a tour. I was like, this is mind blowing yeah. that we have this right here. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just an amazing place. We got, we take it for granted. It's in our backyard. So like, you know, when people, what was some of the feedback you get when people come here and they say, are they, what are some of the things you've heard that have blown you away? Uh, it's, it's funny before we were talking about the people of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. That is an area where we shine. We've got these volunteers, we've got our own staff, and some of the top marks we get are for the human interactions. And actually people will appreciate and understand animals more through the human inter interaction. So when you come in, if there's a keeper next to an animal, you might interact with that keeper and you'll probably learn more about that animal because of your interaction with the keeper. Mm. It's that human like bridge uh, to the animals. And we do that very well, uh, just very friendly. Um, the lot of our number one co compliments are because of the people we have here. You guys just won an award, I heard. Uh, well, we did for actually the dinosaur exhibition uh -huh. uh, for Baltimore Magazine, the best of Baltimore, uh, the best kids exhibit of the year. And then was it interactive maps? You guys oh, that too? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry, was, come come on, we so got, many. We, we got so to give you yeah. flowers, man, yes. props. Uh, uh, yes, uh, number two in the country for our online social presence, social media presence. Uh, so we're, we're definitely, we realize we need to connect with people who can come here as well as listen, um, you know, or, uh, or watch us on their phones. You know, it's a lot of ways to connect. So number two in the country. I love that. Yeah. Hey, it's right in our backyard, folks. You got to come here. So let's talk about the 10 year plan it just came out. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about that so people can get an idea where, where the zoo is going in the next 10 years. Where you guys see it? Sure. Again? So our zoo is almost 150 years old. Wow. And so we've been through numerous evolutions. Uh, a lot of people who, especially people who are, you know, 35 and older, remember the main valley. That was the historic part of the zoo. Uh, most recently, meaning in the 1900s, in the 1930s, cages were built uh, on top of other cages, uh, but they were really small cages. Even the holding areas for the animals were small. The keepers didn't like uh, the holding areas for the animals either. Uh, really not great conditions or humane conditions for animals. Uh, so we, thankfully, as you know, homo sapiens, we evolved ourselves and understood we need to do a better job for these animals. These animals were not thriving in that kind of environment. So my predecessors moved out the animals from the main valley out of these small cages into these much more open habitats like we have in African Journey or Penguin Coast or Northern Passage or Maryland, Maryland Wilderness where we are. And so main valley was abandoned because of these old cages and really was treated as a back of house type operations for, for the zoo. So the public didn't see for 17 or 18 years, the public did not go back there. But it's also the front part of the zoo. And that's mm. our problem. So you come into the zoo 
Uh, you would come into the zoo, and it would take you to get on a shuttle, or you'd have to walk 15 minutes to see your first animal. Yeah, there's some exceptions to that. But still, it is very, uh, it would take a long time to see the animals. Mm -hmm. And that was a criticism we received. Uh, and so now we need to revisit, now that we, my predecessors, and we're still doing great work in African Journey and Penguin Coast, we need to get back to this front. There's about 35% of the zoo that's towards the front that has almost no animals. And we need to bring the animals back. So the minute you walk in, you're going to have a great interaction with animals. It's funny. I was here, and I was with my son, and um, we walked. And I was like, and they're like, yo, the group out, they're like, it's a big, long, it's a huge hill. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Wait until, wait until you walk back. And then I'm like, where are the animals? They're like, you got to go down the hill. I'm like, and I was like, kind of like thrown off. I was like, oh, then it should be like right here. But, but so you're trying to move it closer. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Plus, we do have electric shuttles now that will move people up and down. And we used to have other shuttles as well. But now we want to take advantage of It's a beautiful historic walk right. in the main valley. Uh, but I remember actually when I first came to Baltimore, getting back to that, mm -hmm. I lived in Federal Hill and I walked to Fells Point. And there were so many empty pockets at mm -hmm. that point. There was no Harbor East. Um, you know, the Harbor Place was fine. But it was there were so many empty pockets. It felt like forever to walk from Federal Hill to Fells Point. But now, when you do that walk, it goes like this because, right. because it's the same distance, but you're interacting the whole time with your environment. Cool. And so I think we'll have that here but with animals. But the plan also deals with people. Okay. Our employees, you know, we need to diversify our workforce. There's a, there's a national problem in the zoology field. It's a very white field. So the national, um, this the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, they recognize that. They're trying to figure out how to how to improve the pipeline. We're doing that ourselves. We have had an internship this past summer to try to build up a diverse workforce from ground up. Mm. So, so that's an important part of our plan. Also, um, our employees have been working out of trailers that are dilapidated and more than 20 years old. We want to find a new space. And then the guests, too. We want to make the zoo more accessible uh, for people with some physical uh, needs or you know, also autism or sensory sensitivity needs. We want everybody to feel welcome here and to have some experience. Uh, so, so there's a lot of um, aspects to it. Um, the, the animals, people, and the places. I love it. I love it that you know you guys are thinking about your employees, the diversity awareness. I love the internships. I would love to learn a little bit. That could be a different episode. Learn a little bit more about those internships because I'm like. A lot of people know about that. No, no, no. In fact, it was our first time doing it like this. Okay. So we were very tentative. But if I could just tell you very quickly, it was it's named after Mary Wilson, okay. who was the first African American senior female keeper here at the zoo. It's wow. very well regarded. Was here for twenty plus years, maybe even longer than that. Um, very well regarded here. She passed away within the last year or so. When she passed away, her obituary was written up in the Washington Post, hmm. New York Times. Just it, it was very impressive. And so her daughter wrote a book. And so we thought, well, how can we honor Mary Wilson? Mm. And so the internship's named after her. And so that's how we're going to hopefully continue to build upon that. I forward. love it. I would love to say, we'd love to talk further about that. I yeah. think that's something that's, that the community would love to hear because I think that's sure. something that's really amazing. I know other institutions are starting to do something like yeah, that. Yeah. So I really love hearing that. You know, what's one big takeaway you want people who are listening to this episode to walk away with, listening to what's going on in the Maryland Zoo right now? What's, what do you want them to walk away with? Can it be more than one? It's your show. No, sir, no, I'm, just no, I'm, your just, show. I'm just here. I'm okay. listening. Uh, first, uh, I think zoos get the reputation of being a, for kids or just families. And that's, that's false. This is a great place for date night. Uh, you know, if you're a senior citizen and want to go for a walk through the zoo, it's a great, a, a great place for that. But everybody from birth, Till death would love the zoo, could experience something from the zoo, and and come back invigorated. You know, I mentioned this the oasis part of the zoo. Mm -hmm. um, there's studies that say the minute a person walks into a zoo, their blood pressure drops. Mm. So, so many good reasons to be at the zoo, uh, but it's for everybody, and that's one message I like to get out as well um, to to the community. Uh, the second message would be uh, one I touched upon earlier. Our, our conservation programs and our research programs are very strong, but they're just not as well known as we'd like them to be. Um, we're, we're, again, I think a lot of people think the zoo is fun, which it is. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Thank God it's fun. But it's also very educational doing cutting edge work. So I like people to, to know that as well. Then the third is that for those people who were, were, who might have rejected us because of that long walk from the main gate to your first live animal, we're working on that. So hold on, I, now I have to ask the question because everybody else asks. Okay. What is the price to get in the zoo? 
because I know that's always a big thing. Mm -hmm. I've asked the aquarium this too, because I yep. said, hey, what? I know if I can go to DC for free, and I can go to the zoo and pay whatever amount here, tell me why I need to stay here. Sure. Tell me why I need to stay here instead of going an hour train ride south. Okay. Well, first of all, we're a better zoo. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, no, I'm not kidding. Um, well, well, first of all, just think of gas prices, but also you've got to pay for parking in D.C. Yes. Sorry, National Zoo. Uh -huh. uh, you got to pay for parking. And talk about their hill. They've got a gigantic that hill. That hill's terrible. Um, of course, there's transit connections, but still you can come here and park for free, which is a, a great amenity. Um, our prices are similar, if not better, than uh, some other attractions that are around here. It okay. uh, depends on the deal or you can be a member you can be a member and get some cut rate deals mm -hmm. um but it's in the in the 20s right now depending on you know we've got senior rates and mm -hmm. child rates in the in the in the low 20s um and you can save money by doing it online too um so so but we're also aware we're in a you know we're in a city that has too much poverty mm -hmm. and how can we reach out and help so we um i want to steal something from philadelphia philadelphia uh, has worked with community groups and basically they give memberships to the community groups and the community groups choose families. Uh, and so when the families show up to the main gate here, you wouldn't know if they're poor or not. You don't want right. people to show up at the no. main gate and say they have to prove that they're poor to right. get in or get a subsidy. Instead, it'll happen somewhere else. And so they'll show up at the gate, they'll, be, they'll look like any other member coming in. Right. And so that's something we're, uh, we're looking at as part of our, some of our diversity and community initiatives. Yeah, because I, I would tell you, I would love to come here at night. I don't know if the yeah. animals will like that. I don't know the sleep schedule, but I feel like a nighttime thing. That's like a good vibe yeah. at night. I know they had a couple things here, but nice nighttime vibe to see a couple different little animals here. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool to attract a different crowd. Sure. Possibly. And I know you guys have a, an adult sleepover night camp here too. Uh, I think it's a day camp. It's a day uh, camp? We do have, uh, but we do have overnights. Yeah, the overnight. Overnights uh, with, I think they're aimed at kids, I think. I think okay. But we can do an adult, adult as long as we cut down on the beverage serving. <laughs> well, there. yeah, you don't want nobody in the line hanging out the lines at night. But no, I just, I really enjoy this. I really enjoyed that you took time out of the day. Oh, thank to you. Hang out and we chit appreciate chat it. with me. Um, you know, it's a blessing to be able to tell people that this podcast is doing amazing things, uh, highlighting what's going on in Baltimore and what's going on in Baltimore, Rihanna. We really appreciate that. But we're not going to let you off the hook that quickly. We're going to get you on the speed round, okay? Okay. We got to get you off the hook. Okay. Crabs or crab cakes? You can only choose right. one. No, it was, uh, it's a speed round. We can't give essay here, the lawyer. The lawyer can't, we can't do a lot. Crab cakes because I need to move quickly. Okay. I, okay. Can't, I can't break apart. Snowballs or ice cream? Ice cream. Jersey. Flats or drums or chicken wings? Uh, chicken wings. Flat or thick crust pizza? Thin. thin. Thin crust or thick? Thin, thin. Okay. I was like, I got to make sure. I was <laughs> going to take a Jersey card. I can't do Chicago. I, was, yeah, I can't do it either. Chicago. All right. And what is your favorite Super Bowl, halftime Super Bowl show? Well, I've only been to one Super Bowl. It was the Ravens Super Bowl down in New Orleans, and it has to be Beyonce, even though as a, you know, she was this tall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can barely, she was an inch tall from my perspective. But it, the, you know, the vibe was so great. I don't think the lights had gone out yet. I think that was in the third quarter. Third quarter yeah. uh, but the vibe was so strong. We were, the Ravens were like, they were on fire at that point. So like the, when we hit halftime, they were on fire. Uh, so she was fantastic. And then Des the rest of Destiny's Child came out of the floor and, and joined her. It was pretty cool. If I jumped in your car right now, oh. we're going somewhere, what's the first song that's going to come on? Uh, I've been listening to Alt Nation. Okay, hold on. Well, I'm, I'm listening to Sirius XM Alt Nation, so who knows what they're playing. It's something it, on Alt Are Nation. you a Yacht Rock guy? I, I don't mind it, <laughs> but I can only listen for about 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite band then? Uh, Talking Heads, probably. Okay. All right. Of older ones. Okay. And with oh, Foo Fighters too. Oh, Foo, I like. I saw yeah. Foo Fighters. At, I saw Foo Fighters at MSG. Amazing concert. I was supposed to see them in May, and then the drummer died. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry to end on that. No, no, no. Maybe we're we'll good. Do you have another one? <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> What's, the <best? laughs> What's the best advice you've ever received? Um. It, it's it's simple, but you only got one life. Just live it to the, the hilt, you know? <laughs> Thank you, That's sir. the best. You were off the high sir. seat. Where can we okay. go online and find out any events with the Maryland Zoo? MarylandZoo.org. Our website is full of great information. All right. Well, thank you, folks. Thank, thank you for guys. what you do for the city and, and hey, beyond. Thank I you. I appreciate it. I really do. And thank you, folks, live on location at the Maryland Zoo. Love, peace, bro.